This project is a mess. I have no clue which pattern belongs to which element as nothing is named. Like, what is this pattern even doing or this mixer channel? That's why tip number one is to name absolutely everything. Shift click to rename your patterns, playlist tracks, instruments and mixer channels to whatever it is they're playing. For instruments, this is easy. And if there's some weird undefinable synth, then just try to describe it as best as possible. Trust me, doing this will make your life so much easier in the long run. So now that we know what is what, I typically like dedicating each specific track or row, if you will, to a unique element to stay organized. And also I want each element to be close to its family members because we all want to be close to our families, right? So if you hold shift and then scroll, you'll see that you can move around your tracks. Let's for example, make sure all of our drum tracks are positioned together. And say you have an element like this lead, which has automation clips associated with it, then it makes sense to go even deeper by locating the automation clips below the lead right clicking and choosing group with above track. And if we now move around the lead, the automation clips will follow automatically like magic. And if your eyes are tired of seeing the elements group below, you can just hit the collapse arrow to hide them for a cleaner look. Okay, so now it's time to add some color because not only does this make our projects look prettier, but it also helps us group and identify our families even better. For instance, we can make our drums blue, our synths green, our basses purple, and so on. And that way we can instantly see which family our elements and their automation clips belong to. Nice. Now up next is my favorite organization tool in FL, Track Mode, which combines everything we just discussed by creating an automatic link between a playlist track, a channel instrument and a mixer track. So the way this works is by right clicking a playlist track, hitting Track Mode and choosing an instrument or just by dropping an audio clip onto your playlist track and choosing Audio Track. And if you now change the name or the color of your track, you'll see that the instrument and the mixer track are automatically updated too. Also, if you create an automation clip, it's automatically grouped under the right track. Whoa. And if you're in an existing project like me here, you can just use the use existing channels option to transform your existing tracks into the amazing track mode. Okay, now that our track is getting more organized, I also like to add time markers to visually label sections like verse, pre, chorus, and so on within my sessions. And doing this is very simple. We just set the playhead to wherever we want the marker to be created. We hit Alt T or Option T and we name it. By the way, if you enjoy videos like these, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, quick tip, did you know it's possible to clone your arrangement? This can be a super useful tool if you want to experiment with alternative versions of your song within the same project file. Say if you want to test a different chorus or create a radio edit of your extended mix. Okay, the next subject I'd like to discuss is the browser, which you may be heavily using when it comes to looking for samples. And if you're anything like me, you'll have a lot of samples from different packs and sources. So one of my favorite ways is to star your favorite samples and in turn, Avel puts these samples into this start tab, which could essentially be the place where you'd store and find your favorite sounds to make it much easier and quicker to locate them in future sessions. And you can even go a step further here by adding tags to these samples, which helps you keep this start folder organized as it grows. Also on the topic of browsing and navigating FL, we can customize the exact plugins we want to see under our generator and effect windows by clicking the view more option at the top and then storing those plugins within the list. And in turn, if we go to our browser plugins and plugin database, we can also customize the folder structure of both our effects and generators. Like say we want to group our installed synths, then we can right click any of these plugins, hit open parent folder and create any folder structure we like, for example, base synths to which we can then drag any plugin we want. So here's what that could look like. Now we talked about how we could favorite specific audio samples for a future use, right? We can actually do something similar with mixer presets. Like I, for example, really like the sound of this lead synth in this project. And I'd love to use the mixing plugins that are on the Leeds Mixer channel in future productions to help develop a more consistent signature sound. So what is great is that FL allows us to right click on any mixer track and save it as a mixer track state, 
whether it's for a solo track or for a group or a bus channel. So if I were to use this same lead synth or a similar sound in a future song and wanted it to be processed the same as in this song, all I'd have to do is right click the mixer track, hit file, open mixer track state and launch the FST mixer preset file from before. So there you have it. These were some of my favorite ways to stay organized and efficient. I'd love to hear about your favorite ways to keep your sessions organized in the comments below. And with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.